Okay, so here's some IQ items. So this is, this is from a test, roughly, it isn't from the direct test, but it's an analog of the Raven's progressive matrices. Now here's how the Raven's was derived. So imagine that you have, you got your hundred questions, and you can take out the sum of those and call that IQ. Okay, so now you have a score. Then you can do a correlation between all of the items and that score, and you can find out which single item is the best predictor of the total score. Because you might see that question 39 has no correlation with, with, the, with the mean, with the average. You say, well, that isn't a very good question. You'd actually throw that out of the next test. But you'd say, well, item number 15 is correlated at 0.75 with the total score. So that's a good single item. So then imagine that you went across sets of IQ tests and you took out the best single item predictors of full-scale IQ. What you'd end up with is something like this. So the Raven's progressive matrices is a very good test of fluid intelligence. And it's relatively non-linguistic, which is also an advantage, right? Because imagine you wanted to assess the intelligence of a very diverse range of people, and they all came from different linguistic backgrounds. Well, as long as they can understand the instructions, which are all, almost self-evident, then they're going to be able to do this. Okay, so this is, you see, you have to guess, in case you didn't already figure this out, which you would have had you been using your intelligence and applying it, you're trying to replace the question mark with one of these. And so, here's how you do it, roughly speaking. It's also, a, it's probably a working memory test, because you have to hold a variety of variables in imagination at the same time. Okay, so the first thing you say, see is, every row has a star, a triangle, and a square. And each row has a dot, two dots, and three dots. And so every row has to have a triangle, square, and star, and one, two, or three dots. Okay, so this one, first of all, what's it missing in terms of shape? Triangle. Excellent. See, that's why you're at the U of T. <laughs> and then, okay, and then what's it missing for dots? Two dots. Excellent. So we do a little scan here, and we say, oh, look, well, it could be that one, or it could be... That's it. It's that one. And so, is that right? Yes. Aren't we smart? No. That was easy. So, no, you're not very smart if you figure that one out, because pretty much everybody can figure that one out. I think this next one is more difficult. Okay, so in the first row you see that there's two objects, each are a different color, and they move together, right? They join. That one, they're separate there, they join, they're together. They're separate there, and they join there. So this one should be halfway in between those two. And the other thing that happens is, let's see, oh, this item actually might be incorrectly represented because the blue should be on the other side, whatever. Um, what's that? Three. Yes. Did they flip? Okay, well, anyways, you see that it's three. See, I'm not very bright because I've just lectured for an hour. <laughs> okay, so, so that was a more difficult item. And then this one is more difficult, if I remember correctly. So, let's see. So they're all three different colors, so that has to be color. Then, what's the other thing? The relationship between the colors change. So, what's the answer? Ha, you're all, you're, you're all scared to answer, aren't you? Because you might be wrong. Yeah. And the, neuro, the more anxious people are even less likely to answer. Number three. Okay, so if you want to test someone's IQ, then you put together a like, nice batch of these at different levels of difficulty. And then you sum them, and then you rank order, and then you correct for age, and then you have IQ. And that's that. And then you can say, well, then you can sort people into the complexity of their occupations. And isn't that dismal and wretched? But it's true. So, here you go. This is from the Wunderlich people. They're a commercial company that makes general cognitive ability tests, and it's often used by corporations, even though it's actually illegal. It's actually illegal to use IQ tests, but the Wunderlich doesn't promote themselves as testing IQ. I think, they, I think it's general cognitive ability, which is the same thing, but whatever. The SATs, the GREs, the LSATs, all of those are IQ tests. So... Now, they're more crystallized than fluid, and we'll get to that in a minute. But crystallized knowledge is what you accrue across time. So you could say that fluid intelligence is what programs your brain. It fills it with facts, let's say. It fills it with knowledge. 
And then, but you can get an estimate of your intelligence by sampling your domain of factual knowledge. And the reason for that is that, well, obviously, the better the programmer, the better the content. And so what that also means is that you can, you could, if your prefrontal cortex was damaged later in life, your fluid IQ could plummet, but your crystallized IQ remained more or less intact. So even though they're not different, one produces the other, and then once the producer has produced, then the producer can disappear, and you've still got the encoded knowledge. So at, at least that's how it looks to me. So 